All right, let's call the meeting to order at 6.06 .06 p.m. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I just want to discuss the meeting logistics. Thank you, everyone, for coming for today's Port Ranch Neighborhood Council meeting. My name is Gabriel Callen. I'm the president of the council. I have a few announcements to make. This meeting is being recorded, and the recording will be available on our PRNC YouTube page, as well as our PRNC.org webpage. All meeting attendees will be automatically muted when they join the meeting. Attendees will address the board in one of two situations. Number one, comment on an agenda item, or number two, provide general public comment. After each agenda item is read out loud and before a board vote is taken on that item, if any, I will ask if any member of the public wishes to address the board regarding the agenda item being considered. At that time, the meeting attendees can electronically raise their hand to speak by pressing star nine if they are using a telephone for audio or clicking the raise your hand button on Zoom. That will prompt the pre president that you wish to speak. I'll go down the list of those who raise their hands, turn on their audio one at a time and ask him or her to go ahead and provide comment within a specific period of time. When the speaker's time expires, I'll let the speaker know their time has expired, then thank them for their comments and turn off the audio for the speaker. This process will continue until all attendees who raised their hand spoke. <clears throat> At that time, the board will discuss the motion and take a vote if they choose. As noted in the meeting agenda, there is an item ded dedicated to public comments on items not on the agenda, but within the board's purview. When the item comes up during the course of the meeting, I'll ask if any member of the public wishes to address the board regarding any issue that is not on the agenda, but is within the domain of the board's actions and capabilities. At that time, the meeting attendees can electronically raise their hand to speak using the same procedures described above. Please note that under the Browns Act, the board is prevented from discussing or acting on a matter that is brought to its atten attention during the general public comment period. However, the issue raised by a member of the public may become a subject of a future board meeting. Public comments is limited to two minutes per speaker unless adjusted by presiding officer at his or her, her discretion. All right, let's do a roll call. All righty, David Lasher. Here. Thank you, David Balin. Absent, he'll be, but he'll be here soon. Hilda. Here. Thank you, Jason. Absent, Lewis. Absent, Becky. Present. Thank you, Brandy. Here. Thank you, Jennifer. Here. Thank you, Voss. Here. Thank you, Christine. Absent, Gabriel. Here. I do see Jason just logged in. Let me let him in. And we do have a quorum. Let's move on to the next item, which is the Pledge of Allegiance. If everybody can stand up. And begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America, America and, to and to the Republic, the Republic for, for which it stands, one, stands, one nation, nation, nation under, under God, God, God indivisible, indivisible within liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Next item is update from representatives of public officials, and I don't see any. We can move on to next item, which is item number six, uh, public comments. One second. Are there any public comments? Please raise your hand. Nope, let's move on to item number seven. Item number seven, let me put it on the screen real quick. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Uh, it might be small, maybe one sec, let me zoom in. All righty, yeah. motion to approve January 25, 2022 minutes. I second it. Thank you. Oh. Uh, sorry, who was that who seconded? Becky. 
It was back you that second day. Any comments? No raised hands. I'll call a vote. David Lasher. Yes. Thank you, David Balin. Absent still. Hilda. Yes. Thank you, Jason. Yes. Thank you, Lewis. Is absent. Becky. Yes. Thank you, Brandy. Yes. Thank you, Jennifer. Yes. Excellent, Voss. Yes. Thank you, Christine. Is absent. Gabriel. Yes. Eight to three. Motion passes. Thank you. Can the board see what's on my screen now? Yes. <clears throat> All right, what I'm thinking of doing on this item is uh, we'll approve it by article at a time. So we'll have pretty much uh, 14 uh, article, we have 14 articles, so we'll have 14 different motions. And uh, uh, Ga Gabriel, Gabriel? Yes, sir. I just want to add that uh, there is a yellow highlighted uh, uh, there Dunn's language and our language um, to be proposed is in the red one. Correct, thank you. Thank and, you. I ask, and, and I ask the board, if you have any comments to make, please raise your hand so there won't be a huge massive discussion all at the same time. So if you have any comments on a specific check section, let's uh, raise your hand and we can move forward from there. Brandy, have your hand up? Yep. Um, so I, I like your idea of trying to, to go article by article, but uh, I mean, aside from the fact that I can't see it, um, I have like two very specific things I wanted to talk about and they can be spread out across different articles. So uh, I'd, I'd like if we could kind of address more of the meta issues rather than just the details and writing. Does that make sense? Uh, can you clarify that in which way? Yeah, so uh, I want to have a discussion on whether or not we choose to have the, the students be just appointed or if we let them vote and who gets to vote and like like let whether or not uh, they are voted on or just appointed and who gets to vote for them. Um, it it will come in the following perils. They, they are going to come up. Yeah, there, yeah, they, there's they're multiple going to sections. Come. Yeah, they are going to come up in the sections, yeah. Yeah, they're, that's going to come up, but it's going to come up in multiple sections. So if we talk about it as a decision as a board first, then it makes it easier to say, oh, well, this article, we need to fix this. This article, we need to fix this other. No, actually, Rather than the, like, actually it covers in different subjects. So that is why it is multiple times because the, each one has a different subject, but they are appearing because we could not find the language for that in done. So what we are proposing to amend, then it will come to you and we can discuss with you on that also. Sorry, sorry, I didn't quite catch that. It you is repeated? not just one, it is not just one item. There are a couple of items, more than a couple of items under the youth seat. So they are here given in a, di a different uh, uh, question, this different articles. So each article will come and that will explain why the youth uh, material is given there it will explain itself when the para comes up. So yeah, I've, I've read all the bylaws. Um, okay. There's multiple places where the, this topic is discussed in one way or another. Right. Yeah. So yeah. rather yeah. than, yeah. So rather than trying to look at one article and tweak the language on that one and then pass it or not pass it and then go to another article that now may conflict with the previous one and have to have the same argument again, I'd like the board to have a discussion on whether we want to appoint or have voting and then how we want to have voting happen if we change it and how we want to have appointing done if we don't and then go through each article and change and tweak the language to match what we decided on rather than trying to decide it per article. Okay, so I don't know. It is up to Gabriel. I don't know how we can do that one. So it's up I, to Gabriel. Yeah, so Brandy, you're recommending that we should just call one vote, discuss everything as we go in and just have one vote approval? <laughs> we don't have to do one vote approval, but we can have a discussion first about what we intend to do with the bylaw changes. And then if you wanted to go article by article to approve it, because some people might approve 
or disapprove what it's the the idea it's conveying and some other people might want to approve or disapprove of the language and some other people might want to approve or disapprove the grammar and spelling or whatever Got so it. i want i want to talk about the meta about the things that we're trying to do get that cleared up in a vote first then you can choose whether we do all at once or article by article after that got it yeah uh okay jason <laughs> gabriel yeah, I apologize, guys. I'm kind of sick, so I, my voice is a little off, and I'm going to stay off camera. Um, but I think uh, she's just basically asking if we can talk about uh, that one issue first beforehand, um, which I think makes sense. Like, if we talk about um, – am I right in what you're trying to do? Is You just want to talk about that one yeah. issue first yeah and then, and then we'll get into article by article that's okay. kind of what she's asking she wants to get a feel for where the board is at and and maybe we can all kind of come to an understanding on how we're gonna um got it here's a question for the board has everybody exactly. i know you said brand you have has everybody reviewed all the changes that you received in the email is there anybody that has not well, i reviewed it but there's some like it's not clear to me there's some things that i need clarified because like for example, there's language from done, but then it's not clear whether we're accepting that done language or it's already been included. Because in certain situations, that language is already included. So I think it needs to be clear whether we are adopting that language or we believe that it's already incorporated in the bylaws. Got it. Becky? Um, thanks, Gabriel. You know, we've spent a lot of time, our committee going over all of this, and I think we're kind of jumping all over the place right now. If you would just let Gabriel, who, can we just address it one as, as we have it on the agenda and get on with it? Because it's going to okay, be all night if we do it any other way. Right. Let me do this. I'm going to go by all the proposed changes one at a time. The topic that Brandy has concerns about is the youth seat. <clears throat> when it comes down to the youth seat, we'll discuss all the articles that belong to the youth seat. Is that fair? That's fair. Thanks. Okay. And so let's uh, start. Yeah, Vas. Gabriel, uh, um, and Jason's answer to question, I will say that the yellow language is the done language, and we have repeated that because just uh, uh, Jason had wanted some clarification. So red, red one is our amended proposed amendment. And the yellow one is there. Most of them, some it is all the same. So the, if there is any change, we can discuss that one. But this highlight is just to uh, let everybody know that this is done language and it is repeated because we want to add that one as per done directions. Thank you for doing that, Voss. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. So article number one, uh, there are no changes, obviously. Article number two, this is the defined of the charter section 900. Uh, this uh, right here highlighted in yellow, the purpose of the council is to promote more cit citizen participation in government and make government more responsive to local needs. Neighborhood councils shall include representatives of many diverse interests in communities and shall have an advisory role on issues of concern to the neighborhood. Yeah, that was actually it. the done verbiage. Yeah, and, and that was the same. We have included the same in the red. Correct. There's no change. That is correct. Everybody's good with that. Yes. Thank you. That so was the, if that I, was uh, Gabriel, if everyone is good, we can delete the yellow highlighted one that we are done with that. Yeah, thank you. All right, so this red was the yellow pretty much. And we're good to go on that one. Section number one. Of we need a motion two. to approve that? No, we're going to do it all at once uh, at the end, the way it's looking. So we'll move on to item number two, second change that was proposed. Question? Yes. Uh, because the, he keeps mentioning yellow, the, the version that I have is the version I downloaded from the website that was attached to this meeting. Okay. Is that yes? Is that the thing? I don't, I don't see anything yellow in the first couple articles. Is that the most up to date version? No, there's uh, nothing yellow because that is only I highlighted that to show that this is the Dunn's language, Dunn's verbiage. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I'm saying in, in Article 1 and 2, there's nothing in yellow. It's just in red. So I'm wondering if I have an outdated version that because I downloaded the one attached to the agenda uh, the agenda on the website. The one that attached to the agenda was the last version. That is the correct version. There should have been right okay. after it says Article 2 proposed. Purpose, actually, I proposed. Uh, there should be a small yellow section and then the section one starts. Yeah, there's no yellow there. There's yellow in a different no, no. part. It's but yellow, I highlighted. There is no the yellow in the duns. No, yeah, I just I, I highlighted for the attention for the uh, like important information. Yeah, done the language. Like I just for, highlighted. Yeah. Brandy for Article Five, uh, Section uh, One. Do you see any yellows there? No, all all black and red. Do you see no yellow highlight? I have you, yellow. I have yellow as well. Okay, in this one, I would like to say that we could not find any language in the done. And so that is why our red is our amendment and the yellow one, I could not find anything there. So it is just a language as it is in the, by the done. So it is up to the board to consider that one because it is our new creation. So we have put it in the red. Okay, all I'm saying is I don't have any yellow and I have the version that was downloaded from the agenda uh, yeah, yellow is the one which Gabriel has sent to in board in his email. If I could, okay, I, raise my I do not have access. I do not have access to email. I only have access to what I downloaded before I left the city. Yeah, but that was sent the, by the. the yeah, that, yeah, that, that was sent by the so, email. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I don't have I don't have email. I have the version that was actually publicly publicly published to everybody that's on the current website that was attached to this meeting agenda. Yeah. So I don't know how it has happened because we all received the yellow one, highlighted yellow one. Online online is has yellow on it. By the way, let me pull it up and everybody can see. One well, uh, the one that's on the, our website, I just downloaded it and it has the yellow. Not in Article Five. Uh, That's what I'm looking at. Yeah, it does. Are you talking about P the youth board member? Yeah. The prnc.org slash site slash default slash files. I don't know, Randy. I don't know. I don't know what that is that you're saying. I got it off of our website. I'm looking at the attachment, attachment H. Okay, God. Attachment H. If there's only two attachments on it, so you're looking at last month's uh, email. last month's email, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me see if I grab the other one somewhere. Then it's attachment B on uh, March 24th meeting, which I'm showing everyone right now, uh, is and highlighted. Okay, attachment B. Let me see. Okay, now I have it. Cool. That okay. was I had both versions on the same place in my in my hard drive. It's good, right. good, good. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's move on to a sec article five, section one. There's a place in yellow which is uh which is highlighted. And our proposed changes, and this is where I think you have a problem with possibly Brandy. Let's let me read it to you. The change we're proposing. There shall be an additional one non-voting youth seat open to stakeholders who are at least 14 years of age, no more than 17 at the time of elections or selection, youth candidates to be appointed by the board per Article 5, Section 6 guidelines. Did you have yeah. something to change on that or want to discuss? Can, can I add something to it, Gabriel? Yes, boss. Uh, just for the information of Brandy and other board member, this language in the red, it has been passed by the then Rules and Bylaws Committee under Assad. And we have just copied it from there. So whatever member want to change, we can change it now. Thank you. Thank okay. you. So yeah, this is one of the two. This is one of the two issues. Um, do we? So I, I've been on another neighborhood council where we had a youth who was able to vote on everything except for funding related issues, but we allowed them to vote on non funding issues and uh, so this just says non-voting, so they wouldn't get a vote on anything, including like approving things that were said in, you know, minutes, um, which you know will will have their statements in it. Um, so I'm wondering what the board would feel about changing it so that it's not non-voting, 
but allow them the chance to vote on things that are not funding related. No, they are not elected ones, so they are have non-voting members. Yes, David. So, so that's one second, Bradney. Thank you. Um, just so just so the board realizes, and Becky was on the board with me at the time uh, when we did have the youth seat. It was uh, Ian at the time. He was able to vote, but not on, but correct, Brandy, not on financial items. So we might want to reconsider that because I think that as a youth and the, the younger youth are becoming to are able to vote these days. Um, I think we should try and push it back to the way it was where they can vote, but just not on financial items. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, is there anybody who object to that to that uh, statement? Or does not want let's let's rephrase it does everybody interested or is there anybody that is not interested in uh, a youth seat to be able to vote except on non um funding except items? Funding items. Yeah. because as far as i think only the elected members have a right to vote and these youths are not elected they are appointed so, so, so that's i leave it on the board i leave, leave it on I the board i agree with boss I agree with Vas. So, so this is why I wanted to talk about this not art, not piecemeal, because whether or not the youth seat gets to be elected is the other issue I think we should talk about. But we discussed it, Brandy, at length in our meetings. Um, and in order to do that, we're going to have to have a board of 12 and not 11. And that requires a whole lot of other stuff. My recommendation um, would be let's do one step at a time. Let's get the youth involved. And then the next time we review our bylaws, we'll have possibly see if we want them to be voting members. I agree let, with that. Let, let's kind of see how it works out. Let's not just yeah. throw everything in there all at the same time. I agree just, with Becky. Thank you, David. So I, one second. I, I, I want to, sorry, go ahead. So David? we can put in whatever we want as a board that's fine at the end of the day Dunn will come back and tell us exactly what they want us to do either way so thank you that's right jennifer yes i just wanted to also say i agree with becky we don't have to you know decide right now we can just um you know talk about it in the future but just that's all and uh, i would like to add gabriel that uh, when they are have, going to have the voting right they should find out if they are to have the trainings to complete also, because we need the, them to be trained also. Our ethics training, code of conduct training, and the other one, which is that. That's uh, a great point. Yeah, yeah. That's right, Hilda? I agree with Voss and Becky. Thank you, Hilda. Uh, Brandy, do you have anything to add? I know you're trying to talk. Go ahead. Yeah. Um... So I, I do want to say, you know, to, to everybody that was Becky and Voss, everybody that was on the bylaws committee, I really appreciate all the hard work that went into it. And I understand this probably had long conversations about things, but, you know, committee member committees are only allowed to be so many board members. And even if we had shown up to watch it, we don't, we're Brown restricted from participating. So we, we can't on something like this, say the committee handled it and then not allow more discussion on it. So I, I don't want anybody who was involved in this important process to feel like their opinions or hard work is invalidated in any way, just because we wanna also be heard in uh, any direction on, on these topics. But we, we appreciate the work. It's just, you know, circumstances are what they are. This is where we get a chance to have everybody's input. And- We get uh, it, I, we get somebody, it, Brandy. I, 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 <laughs> we know. I, I, yeah, I, I just want to make sure that, it, that it's understood and on the record that we, you know, we appreciate your work. The, um, the, the idea of doing it one way now and another way later feels, I, I, I'm not a big fan of kicking stuff down the road and I'm not a fan of having, bringing a student in where it kind of feels like they're a seat filler because they're not counted for anything. Um, I, I, I feel like especially uh, if we do open this up where they have that kind of voting stance and they have an elected position, this gives us a chance to really not only support the one student that takes the seat, but also all the students that get to come out and vote and learn about the importance of voting. 
and learning about the processes and like getting to run. And these are all important parts that we want to impart on our local high school students. Thank you, Randy. Uh, David Lasher. I'm home now. I'm, I'm trying to get in as a panelist on my main PC. If you could ladder me and I'll hang out on myself. One second, please. There we go. Thank you. You're in? You're in. One second. Perfect. You know what I'm going to do then on this? Uh, I want to make, I'm going to call a vote uh, to find out the, to find out which direction the board would like to go. Uh, Gabriel, just one thing that I want to highlight here is that all whatever we are doing, it will be overseen by the done. And if they have any objection to like this and a non-voting or whatever, they will get back to us and we'll make the amendments at that time. Correct. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to call a real quick vote. The vote is going to be quick and easy. Will the youth member be able to vote on anything or nothing? I'll second it. Are you making a motion? Um, no, so far, it's just, he said both. It's just a vote within the vote. Taking a poll. Yeah, it's a poll. Okay. Better yet, let's call it, not call it a vote. It's not an official vote. It's a poll to find out if if uh, the youth committee can vote or not. Vote on non-financial. It, it's no. on only non-financial voting. No, this the vote right now. The first poll I'm taking okay. is oh, I see. Okay. pretty much if they can vote at all or they can vote on uh, non-financial. There you go, better yet, like you said. So yes means they can vote on financial stuff only. I mean, non-financial stuff only. <laughs> and no means they can't vote on anything. Does that make sense? So yes on non-financial and no on nothing. Does that make sense? Can they have a, can they have a vote on non-financial, yes or no? <laughs> If they yes. can, if a non make, make yeah. a non financial yes or no, non financial yes or no. Okay, yes. let's do that yeah. way. That will cover the whether they can vote or not. All right, let's do that. Uh, David Lasher, yes. So you're saying that someone clarify you're saying that they can vote on anything that's non, non financial, correct? Correct. Oh, thank you, David Balin. David Bellin? I don't know where you went. Oh, he's in the attendees. Let me check. Oh, he's in the attendees now. One second. My vote was yes, by the way. Yes, thank you. Hilda? No. Jason? Hey, I think they should be able to vote. Non-financials, okay. Yeah, yeah. For Thank sure. you. Lewis is absent. Becky? No. Brandy? Yes. Jennifer? I have to say no. Voss? No. Christine is absent. So we have literally 50 50, and I'm going to end up splitting the vote. Ah. <laughs> uh. What's the point? They're just going to sit there and, and do what on the board? Right. Yeah, right. They're going to they're going to participate. They're going to be discouraged from that. No, 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 no. Well, you know what? We're participating in what true. way? I don't think that's true. We're. What are they going to be doing though on the board? They're not. What an wait. attendee can't do. It could just be a stakeholder at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer, yeah. You, have, you have your hand up, Jennifer. I have not made a vote yet. I'm stuck in the middle. and I, I think it's a good experience for, you know, a 14-year-old, 14 to 17. I think it's a good experience to see, you know, what we do, what the council's about. But in terms of making votes, I feel that that should be up to us um, since, you know, we're elected in. Um, I don't know. That's just my opinion, because I understand um, if they don't vote on funding, but there are other things that we vote too about that are, are, you know, pretty serious. So I, that's just my stance on it. I think it's great experience. They can use it on the resume for college, um, things like that. Thank you. Hilda? I agree with Jennifer.
we're pretty much deadlocked on this item. Let's let, let's do this. Should we skip this temporarily and move on to the next? Is this subject something? I'd table yeah. it. I'd table it. Let's table this section temporarily. So section yeah. one, let's table it at the moment. Let's try to get everything else done and we'll come and have a discussion regarding this item. As I see both sides are very, uh, the yeses and nos are very passionate on their belief on it. So, all right, that next, next item is section number two. Um, the youth seat will not count towards the quorum. We are talking about the youth seat again. Uh, the proposed language is there shall be one additional non-voting youth seat open to stakeholders who are at least 14 years of age, no more than 17 at the time of election or selection, youth candidate to be appointed by board by Article 5, Section 6 guidelines. Uh, is the board okay with, uh, actually it's the same thing, huh? Did I read the same thing? Yeah, because if they vote, they should be on quorum for anything that they can vote on. But if they're going to be able to vote like we vote, being elected by the community, and we're appointing someone and they're allowed to vote, I think it presents a whole new set of issues. That's just my, my opinion, just something to think about. Thank you, Becky. My biggest issue with them voting is going to be 12 on the board counting and Six and six, there's always going to be deadlocks. That's why it's always, uh, you know, an odd number of board members. That's oh. my issue personally. Um, can we see, can we refer this to Dan? We can, we can. Jason, go ahead. Well, why don't we either uh, take away one of the at-large seats or add one so we have a, an odd number? Well, we can't. But that's not my question. That's just my comment to what you said. I have a question on this um, paragraph highlighted here. Which one? Um, it says, uh, after insert number members, book. that's fine. We have that already. But it says, board and committee shall have a fixed quorum number. So it's not clear to me in our bylaws who votes and who makes a quorum on a committee. Do stakeholders help make quorum? Do stakeholders vote? And then, because it says a fixed quorum number. So I think we need to, Dunn is asking for this language here. So how do we, how do we um, explain how to figure out quorum for committees? And how do we decide who votes and who doesn't vote in terms of committee members? Like, for example, if I have a committee and I'm one person and I have one stakeholder, there's two of us. Is that What's the quorum and who gets to vote? It's not clear in the bylaws. So this is an issue that needs to be addressed and maybe um, the bylaws committee can work on a recommendation, but this is not clear to me. Board and committee shall have a fixed quorum number. What does that mean? Floating quorum is not allowed. What does that mean? I think- Great, great questions. Uh, to my understanding, usually, uh... Let's call it a uh, committee usually has three board members or three members itself. Am I right? Well, not always. <laughs> no, you don't have to have three board well, members on a committee. You can have three committee members and maybe only one board member out of those three. Right. Correct. It could be one board member, two board members or three. Exactly. Board members. And they and they are able to vote, though, and within the committee. If they're on the committee, if they're one of the three on the committee, then they, they can vote. And they can't do anything without bringing it in, to, in front of the entire board. Correct. But this is not in the bylaws. This is how you're interpreting it, but it's not, it's not explicit in our bylaws. I don't know that that's clear, that who votes? Does a stakeholder vote if they're a member of the committee? It's not yeah, clear. They do. If they're, if they're part of the three, their vote, it's their vote. I agree. It's but, not just the board members that are on the- that And that should be in the bylaws. We need to put that in because it's not clear to me. Where I don't, would you like us to put it? Right here, section two. It says board- What would you like it to say? I, I just I, like- I'm not be, sure. I just like it to be clear how committees function in terms of who votes, who can't vote, and how quorum is established. 
So this has to go back to the committee. I'm not, I don't have the answer. I'm just presenting a question that's come up in committees for me is who gets to vote? Because you can appoint five stakeholders, right? And you have one board member. Do all those stakeholders vote? Vote Like I could just come up with five random stakeholders and have them vote. You know, it, it's just, it's not, it's not clear. And also the appointment of members is not clear. We should have a clear understanding of who the members are on all of our committees. Well, yeah, they should be listed. They should be listed. That's right. And there should be the problem, a problem. The problem with this neighborhood council and what has happened over many, many years in recent years is that all of the committee members are board members. And it didn't used to be like that. No, that's not true. No. Yeah, the, of the three, they're almost, they're all, so, I don't know so anybody not, who has been on a committee that hasn't been a board member. I'm, I'm not trying to get in like a full on discussion about it. I'm just trying to bring the, the points up that need to be like addressed, which would be transparency in who's on the committee, transparency mm -hmm. on who's voting and not voting, and then transparency on how quorum is figured for committee members. Those three main issues should be addressed. So it's clear to everybody, mm -hmm. not just me or you, but new people coming on the board, it should be clear to a brand new person how this works. They don't know you know, what, what experienced board members know, they have to figure it out and they figure it out by reading the bylaws or maybe it's a standing rule, you know, but I think section two, it has here fixed quorum number. So I, I'd like to get more clarification on that fixed quorum number. Thank you. Thank you. I see uh, Asad has, has had his hand up for a while and I know he was on the bylaws committee last year. Uh, so, Assad, floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good evening, board members. Uh, for the committees, Jason is in Article 7, and I think when we get there, it, you can address it. And it, right now, it shows it up to three board members and unlimited stakeholders. For the voting and the non-voting, this one we have thoroughly discussed on many, many meetings. And we are on both sides of you know, where, exactly where Gabriel is. I agree with uh, Jennifer and Hilda that it should be non-voting from the sense that these are, let's say, in training positions in which the mm -hmm. youth is encountering the experience, but not fully on the board experience. However, these youth, as part of the youth committee, they can vote, they can do everything that we do within the board. So in a way, I'm like 49.999% for non-vote, for non-voting, for the non-voting. So the, I mean, 50.01 for not keep it non-voting until they are ready with the, with the age over 17. That's where and that's where Becky tried to explain to you that we thoroughly went into the two sides of it. And in the end, we felt to keep it 11, they are outside the quorum because even if, if they are there and voting and the main members are not there, it's, it, it causes issues. That's, and I'm sharing with you the big picture of, I, I think these uh, discussions, you were present with it back when uh, Gabriel and I were the committee after Isam uh, resigned. And that's that. So thank you. And I'm here anytime you have anything, just let me know. Thank you, Asad. All right. Let me go back to where we were over here. Where are we? <laughs> where, where, where have we been? So we're still Article 5. Article 5? <laughs> Or um, and I still have, and I still have not decided, and I will make my decision, and I will make it a no vote, just because I like what Assad said regarding let them get the training and feel, and the bylaws can always be edited again in the next year, and we can move forward from there. 
So if we can leave it as a no vote for now. So uh, youth committee does not have any votes at all. They're there, it's a learning process for them. And then uh, next time the bylaws committee can meet, it can reassess for 2022-2023 fiscal year. Is that fair? <clears throat> so it's a five to four poll count at that point, no ends. So I can delete this section right here. Is that right, boss? Yeah, and the only thing I want to add is that in future going forward, Dan has decided that uh, bylaws can only be amended in the non-election years. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thank you. So delete this, this part, right? Completely. Yeah. The yellow could be deleted. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we're going to keep, there shall be one additional non-voting youth seat open to stakeholders who are at least 14 years of age, no more than 17 at time of election or selection youth candidates to be appointed by the board per article five, section six guidelines. Youth seats will not count as towards quorum because once again, they're not voting. So uh, the quorum will stay six because we have 11 board members, actual board members. This section right here, uh, is the quorum shall be inserted number of members of the board. And this number should be six at the moment of time, which we have it over here, present of six. So I can delete this yellow section. So we're just keeping as quorum of six. Next item changed is uh, section number four. It says the Added verbiage is there shall be an additional one non-voting youth seat open to stakeholders who are at least 14 years of age. Same thing as we just discussed a few minutes ago, just repeated itself in the, under the terms sec, or under the terms and limits section four. So I can actually delete this yellow section. Next item we're gonna be discussing is, what is this section? Governing item five. Section E. Uh, the added verbiage is the youth seat is by appointment of the board and his term is 24 months up to two consecutive terms. PRNC board quorum is required to select the candidate to fill the youth seat. Is there any discussion on this item? The board went quiet suddenly. Yes. I have my hand up. Uh, go, for, go ahead, Randy. So uh, I don't think that the board appointing a youth seat is the best course of action. I think the youth seat should be elected and that the people who can vote for the youth seat should themselves be youth who are stakeholders or uh, attend school with and the peer, like live here, have a part-time job here, work with, uh, go to school here, that kind of thing. Uh, because this is one of the best opportunities we have to encourage our youth to learn about the importance of voting and campaigning and get involved in the political process and the government process by having them have a say on who sits in the seat. So I, I, would, I would encourage us not to do it by appointment, but do it as an actual election. Who would be doing the elections? Because I don't think we can add them on the actual elections uh, because of their age. <clears throat> well, that's what we did. That's what we did on my other NC. We had a youth seat, just like, you know, some some NCs have a seat that's like only for renters or only for union people or only for whatever. And then they restrict who can vote for it. And they, we had a youth seat that was only, you could only vote for it if you were a youth that qualified. You had to be exactly the same qualifications to run for the seat, to vote for the seat. And we had them on our regular election. They were just an elected voting member the same way the rest of us were. It was just restricted because they couldn't, couldn't vote on funding items and they were having a different group of people that voted for them in our community. Right. So that's what I would suggest. So 14 year olds were able to vote you're saying on actual election. Yeah, they could, they could come in and vote for the youth seat. So who's going to be handling the elections and registering them. Most of them don't have IDs and how's the whole verification. It was handled, it was handled along with our normal election cycle. It was just, another seat, just the same way we have the regular seats and the one open at large seat, it would have the regular seats, that one open at large, and it would have a youth seat. 
And just like we have different criteria for the open at large than we do for the others, there's a different criteria for the youth seat, and that was about youth. So Dunn handled it for our council the same way they handled any other board member being elected. Which council is it? It was Harbor City. I don't know if they're still doing that, but that's what they did when I was there. Interesting. Any other board members have comments about that? I, he I hear what Brandy's saying, and it's at some point laudable, but at the same time, logistically, it seems like a colossal um, undertaking. Um, and then I also get into whether we're worried about getting quality candidates, and yet we're going to have a school to decide. It it's, sounds like may mad mayhem. But thank you, David. To be, to be clear, it's not to be clear. It's not the school deciding. It's the students who are represented by the youth seat. It's the people who are represented by that seat, which happens in this case to be youth fourteen to seventeen. But they can have anyone that is a youth under the age of eighteen vote for them. I mean, I don't know if you've ever worked on the election, but it's a lot of work and. This is going to really add a whole lot of work to it. I agree, Jason. Yeah, I would uh, agree with everybody that it's it, you know it's a good idea, but I think that you know running the elections is a lot of you know we need to simplify the election process and not make it more um, complicated. And I maybe you don't agree it complicates it, but I think it does. I think it's. Um, you know, are they, do they have to be residents in our boundaries? They have to be youth in our boundaries. Um, I think we're in uncharted territory when we're dealing with the youth already. And um, yeah, so I, I, I do support your idea in, in, in theory, Brandy, but I just think it's gonna be very challenging. Let, let Dunn take this on. If they take it on, then we will um, go along. That's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Valid points. And yet, let's see, I got a brand your hands up from before or you just rose it again? It, it's still up. Okay. And I got Voss. Voss, go ahead. Yeah, I think we can go for now without this one. And later on, when the situation comes, we can discuss on that and uh, discuss with the Donna also how the election is to be handled. But for now, we can keep, go forward and we can discuss this later. Thank you, Voss. You're welcome. Any other comments? Should we do a poll on this one too? What do you think, board? Well, we should be doing motions, not polls. Oh, well, we're gonna make one motion at the end for everything. Oh, That's I see. Fine. Okay, I got you. So polls are pretty much between the board just to see where the board stands and the motion will be for the whole thing all together later. <coughs> Great. I'll start. Yes. Let's do it. So yes, meaning leave it as is. No meaning. Uh... Yes, the language in E. Perfect. I like your simplicity there. Yes, the language in E. David, yes. B David Balin? Yes. Hilda? No. Thank you, Jason. Uh, yes. Lewis is absent. Uh, Becky? Yes. Thank you, Brandy? No. Thank you, Jennifer? I'm on the fence. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can I get back to you? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'll skip you temporarily. <clears throat> Voss? Yes. Christine is absent. I say yes. And the majority, yes. So leave it as is. So I can delete this section right here. Mm -hmm. And E, we confirmed. Two years, two years, uh, pretty much non-voting seat we discussed and appointed by the board. All right, there's this. Now, section number eight, censure. Uh, the verbiage that was added is prior to a censure being filed, a mandatory meeting is required between party involved and with the president and vice president to mediate and try to resolve the problem. 
try to resolve the issue prior for uh, filing a censure. Let's see what else was there. Jason, you have your hand up? Yeah, I just think it should be clarified. Um, I totally agree with the uh, first sentence, but I think when you say party involved, it's very vague and nebulous. I think I, what you're trying to refer to is the grievance. Grievant, grievant. Correct. So the so, party involved and- No, grievant, grievant involved. So you should say then, I guess, the mandatory meeting is required between the grievance, the-, the No, not grievance, Jason, no. grievant, grievant. That's what I meant. Grievance? That's yeah, I grievant, T, for Tom. The person party making the complaint. Yeah, grievant. yeah. That's grievant? a grievant. Yeah. yeah. The word grievant is used throughout the bylaws, so we Thank should keep that. Yeah. So, so a meeting is required between the grievance involved and with the president and vice president to mediate. Is that right? Yeah. Thank you. Any other well, comments? The, the bottom language is same, yellow and black, same. So there is no change. This is a done and our language, same. So do I delete this, uh, Voss, or do oh, I? Yeah, just... you can. If anyone wants to read that one, okay. But after that, you can delete this one. Oh, this you yellow can... is pretty much on the bottom, which we have. Yeah, yeah, the bottom. Yeah, yeah. David Valen. The the recommendation was that the president and vice president become an intermediary between both parties to resolve the issue. Thank you. Right. Thank you. So basically, should we add here between the grievant and the filer, maybe? Or no, grievant is the filer itself. What about the person who the grievance is being filed towards? So it's both them. Then it, if it is somebody else is filing on his behalf, then you can add that word. But otherwise, grievant is the sufficient isn't word. It, isn't there a respondent? Isn't it grievant? And then you would make it plural. Well, you would put like a uh, parentheses S in case there's more than one. Yeah, 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 that and can then, be done. And okay. then what about the respondent? Was it the desire to, because don't you have a grievant and then you have a respondent, right? Is right. that how it works? So was the intent to have the mandatory meeting with the respondent, the grievant and the vice president and president? I think I, think I like that idea best without objection so there'll be between the grievance respondents involved is that going to be an issue with um brown act though or you can say grievance and or respondents i'm going to say no on the brown act violation because there's certain parameters for privacy related conversations uh i don't know what obviously not an attorney and i'm not sure what that ends and begins, but there is some kind of methodology that if it's a person is a private matter, uh, that there is a, a closed session consideration, if you will. Who well, you're suggesting closed session between each party and the president and vice president? Well, I don't know about writing it in the bylaws. I'm just saying that there should be some kind of provision for a closed session so that the agreement and the board and the president and the vice president aren't in a public meeting with everybody there, you know, I have a solution to that, if you'd like. You could just say president and or vice president. So that means that if if you're able to, quorum. yeah, yeah, if you're able to make it happen, then it would be and. If not, it would be or. Okay. Judge and so, David Valen, you have your hand up again. Correct. So I think you're on the right path. The purpose of being an intermediary is you want to meet with the grievant. That could be you. It could be the vice president. And then you want to re, you want to meet with the respondent. And the, the purpose of this is to come to an understanding and to resolve the issue. And then you can, if you need to, you can bring them together for a further discussion, or you could both have an agreement, you know, to settle things as they are. So you can do it three different ways, but you definitely have to meet with both parties separately. And then if they, if they think it's best to meet together to resolve the issue, then so be it. Thank you. Got it. And Gabriel, in the first line, it should be and slash or. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Becky? Um, I'm just not, when I see the word grievant, um, that 
it reminds me the second part of the censure process. Uh, is that person a grievance at this point in time if someone has an issue with, with that person? Um, I kind of liked the wording that, as we had it before, but I'm not sure what the definition of grievant is. Because if someone has an issue with a person, doesn't mean that person's a grievant. That, you know, talk it out. Gotcha. That, so I'm just not clear on the verbiage. That's all. I, I'm not understanding how the verbiage is. Maybe we could use the word complainant. Complainant? I'll think I'll accept that too. Because I think the word grief <laughs> kind of confuses the issue. I don't know what you I think think he's but... right because I think grievant would be like after the grievance is filed. This is pre Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Claimant. So you can... That's exactly what I was trying to say, Jason. Thank you. I got you, Becky. Complaining, I think, would be um, appropriate unless somebody else has a better term. Is that right? Complainant? I, I like complainants. So let's let's read the sentence again. Prior to a censor being filed, a mandatory meeting is required between complainants and or respondents involved with the president and or vice president to mediate and to re resolve the issue prior to filing a censure. Okay, I here I go again. Respondents, what is a respondent? The person that the complaint's being filed towards, or there's an issue. The person with. filing the complaint? No. It's the one who it's against. So the complaint is the one who has a problem, and the respondent is the one who. Against whom the complaint, complaint is being filed. Hmm? Against whom the complaint is being filed. Yeah, or you could, you, could, you could use, you could say, or the subject of the complaint. That's more precise the subject that way it's referring to the complainant the subject of the complaint and i would say also pluralize that as well of, of you know the s friends and or the Where subjects because it could be a, a two or three it could be more than one person All subject mm -hmm. yeah like that? i find this fascinating given my 12th great grandfather was a village negotiator who got the name lasher because it means one who puts out fires in Germany in 1685. Oh. oh, wow. So prior to a censure being filed, a mandatory meeting is required between complainants and or the subjects of the complaint involved with the president and or vice president to mediate and try to resolve the issue prior to a filing of a censure. Yes, except between the complainant. Okay. For, uh, go back, between the complainant between here yeah so it's though it's so it's all the same the subjects okay. the president the complaint there right. looks good i see hands up let me i don't know who just rose it up or not david bale and you have something to say do we want to utilize the word um instead of required uh i mean um, requ did you say requested or required it is required the currently the way we have it um I don't know if it should be required, but it should be recommended. Then it won't be mandatory. Yeah, I, I was thinking well, if it's not mandatory, that means that they don't really want they don't want to resolve the issue. So it's I think it's I think it should be you you can't make anybody do anything. I think it should be recommended, but they, okay, then what, put, what happens if we can't make this happen? Then what happens? There's no contingency plan here. So you know, then the censure, then, then it doesn't go through, then it goes to a censure. You know, we, we have to think about what if, what if they leave the country? What if they, they, they don't, they don't agree to go into the meeting? You know, that's, that's a realistic possibility. You know, the, the department, they may have um, some verbiage for this because at our meeting um, with um, the woman who, you know, we had that meeting with a few weeks ago. Um, they're kind of wanting to resolve these issues before they, they take a bigger step. So maybe they have some verbiage for this that we're not aware of. But I think this is a step in the right direction. I, th I think if we just say like strongly recommended or, you know, because you can't, you can't make somebody, you know, 
we are in a free country. You can't make somebody do something, you know. How about, if, how about Jason? Don't mean to interrupt, but you know that word. I agree. That word that we have here, mandatory meeting, is required. What if we change it to requested? Is a mandatory meeting is re should be requested between the couple. Yeah. Yeah, request would be okay or highly recommended or, you know, any of those kind of words are good. Uh, whatever should be, meeting should be. It would be unconstitutional be. if you think about it. If you, if you mandated that they go to some kind of meeting, they could determine that that's like unconstitutional, right? But then they could do the same thing with the censure and the grievance. You know, this is just a step that's going to save the city a whole lot of money and time if they can resolve it before it, it escalates to the next level. That would be my my thinking on it. And I think you're right, Jason. I don't think that you can require it, but you can request it. So your su the suggestion is changing required to highly recommended? Or, or like shall be requested. So like that would be our procedure that the either the vice president or the president would request a meeting. So you're like saying David was saying, individually, maybe and then with the other side or but it would be at the discretion of the president or the vice president how they want to handle that okay we have a few more hands up real quick uh, i see we got to make it flexible for us you know you got to build some flexibility in there thank you got it i don't want to start i don't yeah. want to start cooking i will just say how ready, about, it's gonna be quick i mean be like you want to change first how about that a meeting should be requested What are we here? Are you saying should be requested or shall? No, like prior to since you're being filed, a meeting may be requested or meeting may be held. I like shall be requested because yeah, the other word, Voss, kind of leaves it okay. up okay. in the air. Like, okay. we don't have to ask you, you know, but we okay. might, but. We, we can't make him come, but we can tell him it's right. mandatory. Okay. You say it's mandatory, you know, <laughs> they're not going to get arrested if they don't come. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, let me read. Uh, uh, David, you have your hand up again. Let me, let me answer these three and then we can reconfirm it. David, you have to add something? David, La uh, David Balin, sorry. I don't think he's there. Becky, let me put his hand down. Becky, you have to add something too or no? Oh, no, I'm good. Okay, I'll lower your hand. I have Assad, go for it. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Yes, I agree with what Becky and Buzz was telling you. The, the word mandatory came in from the civil service in which it gives the first level of being mandatory. And then if either party does not wanna agree to it, then that's an immediate elevation to the next level. And the word mandatory is just inherited because it exists in all the grievance and the procedures within the city system. Uh, and that's where we had it. The respond, the one where we were saying about the respondent, the respondent typically is whomever representing the board in case it's a board member, uh, you know, filing a grievance against the board itself, then one, uh, board member would be elected at the respondent who is filing or the forms and representing the board at the high level uh, uh, hearings. So that's where the, the mandatory came in. So that this way, if it fails at this level, then it's immediate elevation to the next level. However, you're giving leeway here to the president and vice president to fix it. Thank you. Thank you, Asad. All right, so this is the final statement and that it, let's, uh, let me read it real quick. Prior to a censure being filed, a mandatory meeting shall be requested between the complainants and or the subjects of the complaint involved with the president and or vice president to mediate and try to resolve the issue prior to filing a censure. If anybody objects, raise okay. your hand. Should we still go with the mandatory or just a meeting shall be requested? I think um, I like the word mandatory because it makes okay. it sound like more forceful, but it's not required. Okay. Everybody agrees we're good? I think it's very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Thank you. I like group work is great. Good job, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Move on to the next change. <clears throat> We're halfway. It's the same language, yellow and the red one, same. All right. Uh, uh, okay, so this is what Dunn recommended. Yeah, and, yeah, and this, this is what we wrote. Yes. Right here, should I read it or we can see it? What page are we on? We are Re on. Section 10, resignation, resignation. If you could just state the page numbers because yeah. I'm going to follow along on my computer. Page 10. 10, 10, page 10. Thanks, guys. Page 10, section 10. All right, I'm here. Perfect. The yellow is what the Dunn suggested. The red is what we wrote. What choice same. do you have? <laughs> same, same, same. Pretty same. much. No choice. No choice. We good to go. Yes. Anybody object to it? Raise your hand. Otherwise, we can move forward to the next item. No raised hands. I delete what Dunn suggested. Keep the part in red and uh, move forward to the next item. Next item is once again, page 10. On the bottom, section two, officers. She continues there, All right? This is uh, the duties of the secretary. The they secretary. said Dunn language. Dunn language. Dunn lang and it's Dunn language too. Below is ours. If you go below. Sure. Yeah, this is ours. Oh, okay. So it's same thing, pretty much. Yeah. Let everybody see this. This yeah. is Dunn language re recommended right there. Yeah. Let me give a couple of seconds for everybody to read it. Right. And this is us. This is a Dunn language, and the bottom is ours. Does anyone have any comments or objections to item number C, secretary on article six? So article six, section two, item C is what we're working on right now. Page, what page are we on? 11? 11. We're on page 11. If you're reading it, please read, look at item number C and D at the same time. Small change was added. Then the change is pretty much the order of who runs the meeting. Uh, pretty much it's the president first. President's not, not there. It'll be the vice president. The vice president's not there. It'll be the secretary. And if secretary is not there, it'll be the treasurer. That's pretty much what the section is about. You guys are so hard on the treasurer. <laughs> treasurer worked hard already. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> treasurer has a lot of responsibilities I wouldn't want to do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. <laughs> so everybody good with CND? Yes. Which is the, pretty much the same thing except rewritten. You're clarifying <laughs> who's presiding. Yeah. Correct. That's so once again, idea. president, vice president, secretary, and then treasurer will be presiding officers in charge, depending on who's absent. Any objections? All right, let me delete Dunn's language, which we have it already. And we can move Don't you on. you have to add that D, <clears throat> the D in there? I don't see it in there. These right here. The treasurer shall perform duties in accordance with city policies and procedures. Where is that in our bylaws? What you, which part are you talking about? The, the black language is in our previous bylaws. The D is in there the, with city policies and procedures? It should be there. Yeah. I don't see it there. See. I think you have to add that on D. Black, black one is taken from the previous uh, uh, ruled by laws committees. What it uh, says is that they maintain the records. <coughs> say, uh, let's see. Oh, the proper financial procedure yeah, yeah, as prescribed yeah. by the office. Yeah. Of the city. yeah, yeah. It is already there. 
Well, it's a little different than language. But yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It's all right. Good? Yeah. Perfect. Let's move on to article number seven. Section one. Uh, once again, the yellow section is what Dunn recommended. And, uh, and here we have options also, like every and see other different committees. So the black is already there. The red one is that we are adding that. So we're not going to add our standing committees then? Maybe later on. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, yeah. Should I read the paragraph that we're at or uh, editing and changing the verbiage or is everybody can see what it says? This is standing committee, Jason, not the standing rules. Okay. Yeah. Anyone have any objections? Uh, I just have some um, concerns about this uh, amendment. So, for example, when you file a CIS, you know, the president, um, in different situations, people are, are going to be authorized to speak in front of the city council, but also you're not addressing like um, speaking to media. You know, so we get we get emails from uh, media outlets and typically the president would um, handle those. But there's situations where um, we file a CIS, for example, let's say Brandy files a CIS. And she may go down to City Hall and speak on behalf of the Neighborhood Council. Um, so that's not included here. And so there's a, um, by adding this, I think there's a lot more other situations you, you have to um, think about too. And the, I gave the two examples, the media, but also when we file CISs. It might be the um, chair of the land use committee, or it might be the chair of, um, you know, with the tree stuff. Maybe I am um, did a CIS on something relating to urban forestry, and I might be speaking in front of um, city council on behalf of the board. So, gotcha. I don't yeah, know. We, yeah, so if we, I can add, Gabriel, I can add something that is a part of a liaison. So, Empower LA has a, like different uh, topics on public works and other. So the NC, our PRNC can designate some person there and inform the Empower LA. The same way we can have the liaison for different thing that can be discussed in one of our board meetings and we can add on that also because standing rules we are going to add later on. Yeah, I think Voss is trying to say if somebody writes a CIS and wants to read it in front of a city council. Uh, I, I'm thinking, what do you think about adding well, I, the, my point, I guess my point is, is that this kind of goes without saying, you know, the president, it's like our president of the United States, you know, he speaks on behalf of our country, you know, the president of our, of the board is, um, you know, kind of the first channel that things go through and they do speak on behalf of the board. So I think this kind of goes without saying, and I don't think you necessarily need to put this in honestly, because you're opening up a can of worms. Uh, and, and the CIS is the same thing. When you file a CIS, somebody's going to go down there and speak on it, one of us, and we figure that out on our own. You know, we don't necessarily have to put this into the bylaws if you want to put it in standing rules and things like that. But, you know, typically a CIS, the person who who's going to go there is going to be the one who's most knowledgeable about it. Right. Yeah, that's if you remember, Jason, in the first Not meeting, board on, meeting yeah. in the it's first one, I had... Uh, uh, and taken the subject for liaison, and you said we can uh, but it's not do a the same thing. So, it like is. you said, that everyone has a expert in a different thing. So that was to be left to be discussed later on. And then I think you got your foot injured, and then you could not. Uh, we could not discuss that. Also, that was my main topic in that one. That we should have different liaison for different departments. I think the liaison is a totally different thing. I think the liaison would be like a liaison between, let's say, CD12 and our board. Or the no, no, that, that is for Empower LA. They have a liaison for each neighborhood council. So their liaisons are also handled expert subjects, different I know, subject. I know, I know you think I'm talking about what you're talking about, but I'm not. I'm yeah, talking, different subject. I'm talking yeah, I, about filing a, a community <clears throat> impact statement. For example, let's say it's relating to uh, urban forestry, giving them more money. 
that has nothing to do with, you know, we, we don't need to make a liaison for every single city department. It's just somebody on our board is spearheading this issue and is going to be the one who's going to, you know, speak on that issue when it comes to the city council. Um, That's up to the board to decide. That is up to the board to discuss and approve. What do you think about adding something? Anyone who wants to speak in front of city council uh, to discuss it with the president or something in that line? I would just leave this whole thing out because you are opening up like a lot of different scenarios that you gotta. If you're gonna put this in, you gotta include all the other stuff, the media, the, you know, speaking on behalf of different subjects, liaisons, you know, it, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's better just left. Because this is speaking pretty much primarily to a government official. It's not talking about anything else. And this one motion was approved also, as it is the president is authorized. This was approved in our uh, August meeting. Mm -hmm. The motion was passed. So we don't need to put it in the bylaws. I don't know. Because the, the problem that I that I see here is that it maybe it negates anyone else to ever speak to a government agency. Only the president and the vice president could ever speak to a government agency because it's staying right here in the bylaws that those are the people that are authorized. So that to me means that everyone else is unauthorized. So you would be limiting other board members from speaking to government agencies. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's problematic. Can I have feedback from other board members? David Valen. All right, so I, I agree and I disagree and I agree and I disagree. So at the end of the day, do we need a, li a head liaison? Absolutely not. Do we need qualified people to speak on our behalf? Absolutely. Education, whoever's best, whoever writes the CIS, they should be the ones speaking. If it has to do with media, then Gabriel, you should be saying, you know what, I need you to take this because you have the expertise in this particular area. We need the best person to speak on our behalf to not make us look like idiots. Because I'm gonna tell you, if you don't know what you're saying and you go in front of the council or you go in front of the board and you, and you just speak nonsense, you make us look bad as a whole. So at the end of the day, I, I highly recommend, I hear, what, I hear what Jason's saying, we need the people that's, that know what we're talking about, We uh, committee-wise, situation. For instance, let's just take the park that's going to be coming around with naming of the park that Jason and I have worked on endless hours, endless years. Um, if, if, if we said, hey, Voss, we need you to go speak regarding the naming of the park, Voss would have no idea about the park because there's been no work done on it. So we really need the best members of our board to speak on our behalf. And I, th and I think, Gabriel, I agree. You, they should, there should be a check-in system with you, you know, and you, you're good with it. You're going to go, you know what, go ahead. You got it. Exactly. You can make the final decision. You're the president. Well, what do you think about, David, this is directed to you. What do you think about adding uh, or assigned by president, something like that? I don't have a, I personally, I don't have a problem with that because I think you, you know, as well as I do, as well as the other members that have been on this board, you really want the best person to speak on our behalf. You don't want to make us look bad. So I don't have an issue with that. Gotcha. Thank so you. Thank you. Currently it says president is authorized speaker for the board to government agencies on behalf of PRNC board and vice president as the alternative speaker. Or to be able to defer the right board member, whatever you want to say, but it's up to you. Designee. I Perfect word. Thanks. Um, yeah, I don't know what you're achieving by putting this in here because you're you're not um, you're saying government agencies, which is really, really broad. So is that city council? Government agencies, I think, across the board. So that would be city council, board of public works. What about the LAPD? Government agency is a catch all for all those agencies. If it's a government agency, it's a government agency. Let me see, let me try to fix something here. And then we'll discuss, president can also designate a speaker on behalf of the board. 
Well, you can add another sentence after that saying, uh, president may at his discretion designate another board member with an Repeat S. That, Jason, right here, that's a president. At his discrimination, discrimination. You could, yeah, you could put it however the president may at his discretion designate. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Discretion. I don't know why. Well, I'll fix it. In you guys have to be be careful that we don't take people's freedom of speech away from them. Right. Yeah. Discretion. Well, this is this is speaking on behalf of the board. You can always speak on behalf of yourself, yeah. speaking to any government agency. President Honestly, I can also designate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, president, at his the de designate or discretion can assign any other board member with an S because it could be more than one member or members. Yeah, perfect. Uh, president at his discretion can assign any other board member members uh, to speak on behalf of the board. Um, Gabriel, instead of saying after the word discretion can, how about the word shall? Shall. And then you should put may after president. May, may assign. President, president may. At his discretion. Yeah, that's very good. May. At his discretion. Comma after May. At his discretion shall assign. And what Any about in the case members. of the CIS? You know, typically, are you going to do that in standing rules? But I think typically the author of the CIS. We can add, we can add that on here. Give me a sec. President that, May at his discretion shall assign. Shall assign. Any other shall assign a board member members not any other how about see yeah, across those two words assign out. assign board member or members not a because s is there so can assign board member or members mm -hmm. yeah to speak on behalf of the board you right. can say assign one or more board members as the case may be so again. After uh, at his discretion, okay, may assign shall assign one or uh, one or more board members. Okay, to speak on behalf of the board. Yeah, yeah. I, I like it. Then you have some checks and balances. Exactly. And then should we add something for CIS then? The author of the CIS may be able to speak on behalf of the board. How uh, should we do that? Well, I think you can put that in standing rules. When you do standing okay. rules, I think you might say that, you know, it is a common practice or recommended that the author of the CIS, if it does get filed, speak um, on the CIS when it comes to uh, the, the city. Got it. Thank you. David Bailey, you have your hand up. Maybe it was left up. Yeah, lower. We want to put anything about media. You know, media is a, is a big issue. We get a lot of inquiries about media. Right. Do we want to do standing rules or bylaws for that? But I think it's important to be clear who uh, speaks to the media or who um, designates. You can change here both to media and the government agencies or government agencies and the media. Yeah. Because anybody can speak on their behalf of themselves, but this is on behalf of the board. There's right, a, right. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so the president is the authorized speaker for the board to government agencies and media, and, maybe here. And the media. And or media. And or the media. Yeah. I think that protects protects you, Gabriel, because it's explicit here that you're authorized. Correct. On the, on the PRNC board and the vice president as alternates. Speaker, President May, at his discretion, shall assign one or more board members to speak on behalf of the board. Good. We need to have shall in there. President May, at his discretion, assign one or more. I can release shall. I think it, yeah, it sounds better. At his discretion, assign one or more. Yeah. 
And the rest of the paragraph looks good to everybody? Just read it, please. Yeah. Do we have to capitalize the word board? The word, what, sorry? Board. Board is capitalized. This one? Yeah. OK. OK. Can you go through the rest of the changes, boss, what you're trying to achieve here? I, I did kind of read through it. Oh, thank you for me. I, I see the change you made. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, about the meetings. Yeah. Being the committee meetings. Let's see. So does it look, is it good for everybody? The standing rules? I think I like the way it's written The standing okay. committees. The standing committee. Yeah. I like the new changes that were made. Does anybody object to the standing? I, I just want to make a comment. One of my main concerns was that our, our committees are not meeting quarterly and that we would be out of compliance with our own bylaws, but this solves that issue. So I thank you guys for doing uh, that. I think that it's, it will come up in the next one that committees should meet, uh, I think uh, twice a year or something. It is in there, it will come up, I think. Well, you change shall to should, because you know, our committees are not all meeting. Uh, we can say shall. No, I would I would not say shall because- No, should is good. Should okay. is especially, okay. especially with COVID and lockdowns, a lot okay. of committees okay. can't meet in person. So that's why should is, I think the way okay. written is perfect. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I agree. Any objection to this paragraph? Without any objection, I'm going to delete the yellow part, the done verbiage. And uh, section one is, we're well, moving on to section two. That section is the done language and bottom is ours. And it's identical, right? Yeah, it, Pretty much. Yeah. All right, I'll leave it on the page for done. What done requirement is, and I'll move on to uh, what we changed it to, which is similar. I don't see our language uh, being our language yeah, on the next, next to that is yeah, it is here. There you go. Here. Let me see. Yeah, here is a discretion word. If you want to check that, Gabriel. Discretion. Did I change? Did I just fix the spelling on that one? Or yeah, if you can, we had it before also, and we were not sure about that spellings. Well, why don't we just adopt the exact language because we're not using the exact language here? We could. They're different. I mean, the paragraphs, the words are different. I mean, maybe the meaning is similar, but I think we should be adopting the exact language from done. And no, every, every on... NC has a different language. If, if, if they're you... telling us we should adopt the language, then we should just adopt their language. And then if we want to add something to it, that's fine. That's pretty much yeah. the same thing. Because we have that to it. That's already there, and that has already been approved by the DAN, whichever is there in the black language. All right. I mean, that's fine. We can let it go. Yeah. So it's good to go. That's their problem. They're going to edit things anyways at the end. And they are going to oversee that one, yeah. All right. Any objections on ad hoc committee? No, all right. Let me delete. Let me check this sentence here. Make sure we this question. Uh, Same right. That's right. Okay, perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna delete this guy right here. All right, section four, make it easier. There we go. That's what we added. It wasn't there before. Section four, youth committee. The youth committee chair should be appointed by president. Youth committee shall be dissolved at the time of executive officer elections as defined in article six, section three. Youth committee may have adult supervisors, but no more than three board members. LAPD life scan background check shall be required to supervise a youth committee. 
Any objections to this section? It's just comments. the wording needs to be fixed on the first sentence. Which one, sorry? The wording on the first sentence, the youth committee chair to be appointed. Shall be appointed, will be appointed. Shall be. Shall. Yes. Okay. That's it for me. Hi. Any objection by any board member? Any comments from stakeholders? Let's move on. Next item is on page 14. And uh, section six. The yellow is once again is done recommendation and red is uh, what the bylaws committee came up with. Section seven actually. Youth seats are only by board vote and appointed and is excluded from the elections and ballot rules. Board will follow Article 5, Section 6 for appointments. Any objections to this section? Without any objection, I'm going to delete done suggestion and leave what the bylaws committee had input. And we can move on to, we're almost done, wow. All right, so page 14, section four, dispute resolution. Let me see. Page 14. Okay, so this is what Dunn suggested and this is what bylaws committee edited. The only thing that was added is yeah. within 60 days. Yeah, we added it within 60 days, yeah. Or you can say with 60 calendar days. Yeah, it's important to, to distinguish between calendar and yeah, yeah. fair. D A R. Yeah. Looks good. Any objections on yeah. section four? So just so I understand, so that if, if there's a grievance that comes in and the board doesn't take any action on it, then what happens? It will automatically go to the grievance, regional grievance panel. Is that what this is saying, basically? Yeah, pretty well, much. You know what? Truthfully, I think that that's, I think Department of Neighborhood Empowerment, there is a 60 day limit. I don't think that's our decision to tell yeah, you. It is there. It is Dan language says 60 calendar days. It's already there. So, so you have to file it within 60 days or you can't file it. No, no. Yeah. You, it says that if you cannot, issue cannot be resolved. If it is resolved, then it's okay. So, if there's a complaint, then the board. Our bylaws, doesn't it say we put it on the agenda at the next uh, regular meeting? Isn't that what our bylaws say? Well, right now, the way we're doing it is we're supposed to meet with the president or the vice president, try to discuss it, and then it gets to uh, the board. That's after we file a grievance or a grievance was filed, my understanding, right? So, and within 60 days, if it doesn't resolve, then it will be referred. So if they can't resolve it with the president and they can't resolve it within themselves, then uh, they have 60 days to do all that. But isn't it supposed to be put on the agenda for the, if it can't be resolved, then doesn't it go to the board on the board agenda? Yeah, I think that should automatically, it should be. Where is that in the bylaws? I thought, I yeah. thought we had something in there that said, um, at the next it's right here next section oh okay that's fine okay we're good thank you so this section looks good it's basic 60-day calendar okay can you scooch that up a little bit so i'm which part? Right there. Yeah, that uh, page 14 go up. That's good. I just can't. 
That's good. Okay. Your page numbers and mine seem to be a little bit different here. Okay. So the number section four is di dispute resolution. And that's a paragraph. This is what Dunn suggested right there. You guys want to read it real quick? And then um, this is where the, this is what you're discussing, right, Jason? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Section five. But wasn't there something that says it needs to go on our next agenda? Something I remember that. See. I think Dunn had mentioned that to us on the, during the agreements, I believe. This has been added on here. We can add it. We can add it on here. <clears throat> that's why we're doing this. So, well, I think if if we do get something and you can't resolve it, then I think wouldn't it be when would we want to make it out? obligated to bring it on the agenda next meeting we can i thought we had that in there didn't we have that <laughs> no no that is copied here whatever was there so does the board want to add something about that You know, we're we're going over all of this, but the department has very specific guidelines for grievance. I don't know that we can change it. Where, where's the part where it talks about it going on the agenda at the meeting? I'm not sure there's directly any verbiage on that. Let's see. What there was. The trainings. Oh, is it section two? Let's see. Let's see. And if it was, it wasn't changed. It was left as is. That's why we're not popping up right now. I can't read that fast. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> There's so many things I'm trying to. I, I think it's fine without that because the president has the ability to set the agenda already. So the president, right. But the problem is maybe the president could not want to put it on the agenda. What do we have? What do we, you know, is that, is that okay? If um, I, you know what, Jason, I think that the president has the authority to do it privately. It's one of the few things that they, you can do privately without well, being in front of the public to try and resolve it and if that doesn't work then you can you can go public or not but that, the, that's the department's rule not ours what if the president is the subject of the complaint and they choose not to put it on the agenda that that's a conflict of interest well then i think it would i don't know that's a good one but i probably the then vice president not, would have to do it right yeah, or that is a good one because it, it should be we should decide if we want to make it mandatory because um you know you could get in a situation where you have abuse of the presidential power you know i agree okay, so where where here do you want to put that what would you where would you put it what would you say i i think we can put it there where we had a meeting maybe it shall be held uh, uh, with the president and the vice president and we can add if issue is not resolved it will be add, uh, uh, added in the agenda for the next board meeting it will be placed on the agenda for the yeah, next. Yeah. So we that. can go back there. We can go back. Yeah. Sounds fair to me. Once yeah, we can add it there. Maybe right here? The on, no, on the top of the page, it was there somewhere. Let's see. Grievance, you can find the grievances where the grievance is there. Number 10, I think it was in 10. 10? I don't know. Right to check. This right here, yeah, yeah. Here, here we can add it. And if the it, issue is not resolved, then it will be referred to the next uh, in the agenda. It will be put a place on the next board meeting agenda. If issue cannot be resolved, if the issue cannot be resolved, it shall be placed. It shall be placed on the next board meeting or whatever on the next regularly scheduled next scheduled board meeting yeah 
capital B. B, capital B. You like the capital Bs. Yeah. <laughs> He's there you go. as fast as he can. <laughs> Good? Yeah. Satisfies everyone? Uh, I think it's very uh, fair. Yeah. Thanks, Perfect. yes, sir. You go back to page 14, wherever that went. I think it's all right. Good. It's 15, I think, for us. Page 14, 15. Yeah. It's mixed. It mixed up a little because I deleted some yellow sections. Yeah, yeah. So I moved pages up. So I'm going to delete this yellow section right now. And let's do this for now. I can fix it later. So the section five, everybody good for it? Good, good with it? Yes. What page you, is that on your it's section? Changed, it, changed, it changed a little bit. It's the article. Right. Uh, okay, so. Right before 16, 16 at the bottom. Article 12. She doesn't have the same page. So article 12. Yeah, Probably page 15 or 16. Okay. 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 Section it's article, 15. it's article 12 though. Now 12, we're yeah, article, yeah, we're yeah. Article. Okay, I got it. So we're good with this section five, and we can move on. Yeah. Article 12, 13, 14. Almost done. It's the yeah, same language. Yes. Yellow done, and the bottom one, next one is ours. Yeah, We're almost done, no pun intended. So the 17 is uh, the optional, that's an optional one there? Optional by the done, but we can uh, adopt or not adopt, it's up to us. What is, yeah, what is the committee recommending we do here? Let me read it again. Do we want to get hard on each other about the trainings basically? Yeah. The, the city, basically, the city recently told me that the president has to be hard on them and take action against board members. I don't think the neighborhood council board members or the president should be responsible for taking action. I think it should be the city's responsibility, but uh, that's what the city wants the president to do is take well, action against his own board members. So we can leave it the way we want to do it. It's just saying that they can't vote. That's all it's saying. Hey. Which, which I think that's isn't that already the existing situation correct but uh, for the anti-bias training for example the city was telling me that i should take action against board members uh that do not comply for example what are you going to do is that's that good. mandatory that, training that that's man knowledge? yeah that's mandatory training so exactly what does the president do so we can discuss that if, and obviously we all did it now but for the future what will happen if a board member does not do it? Do we leave the president to do something or do we refer back to the city and not leave it out of the neighbor council itself? Um, I don't think they should be able to vote. And I think you should add the word all. Board members not completing all mandatory trainings because this, the way it reads, they oh. could do one of the mandatory trainings and they'd be in compliance. But that's not the intent. Or Which the one? This is what we have so far, and we have option of adding this. I'm talking about the optional section. Member board members not completing all mandatory trainings provided by the city within within maybe we have 30 days prior, prior to due date. We have 30 days in the existing. <clears throat> yeah, I think we need to say. Uh, so many calendar days. I mean, that's fine. Whatever you guys think on that. Because right now, what I've been doing is uh, everything's due before the due date. But here it doesn't say calendar days. Well, and the, oh, this is for after seating. After seating, uh, I think it should be before 30 days. Yeah, yeah in our it is 30 days, the next para. Right. Within 30 calendar days. Cannot vote until certified by the department. 
and fully compliant. What do you think about that? I mean, it doesn't say who enforces this, which is okay, I think, because... I don't think it should be the president's, vice president's responsibility to right. go after board members when the elections were done by the city. The city should enforce whatever punishments or whatever they want to do. The only thing that we can enforce is not allow you to vote, either on funding items or all items, depending on what you didn't complete. But basically, you're running the meeting as president, so you're at some point going to have to say, oh, you didn't complete your training, you can't vote, right? Correct. You're what's the presiding officer. Pretty much what's been happening now. Yeah. I think it's good. So do we want to add this optional? I think it's already in here, everything. So I can leave it as out. Leave it it's out. It's already there. Yeah, it's already there. Uh, are we going to put 30 days somewhere in there? Right yeah, 30 there. days there, yeah. Calendar oh. days, yeah. Yeah, okay, it is there. Yeah. I added the word calendar that wasn't there before. Yeah. Sounds good. What happened here? And this was out too? We passed this already or no? No, it's already concerning that one, which already is in, it's there in our, yes, Same here thing. it is. Yeah. Okay. All right, and the next item, this will be easier. Self-assessment. Self there we go. Self-assessment, the council making this, oh, the yellow once again is the DUNS. I have a change on the red attendance paragraph. Where at? Here? Yeah. Go for it. Uh, I would fix the wording. Let's see. Read this. Out. Attendance of a Department of City Ethics, which financial disclosures, funding training, all other mandatory trainings required not offered, required by the city, right? Yes. Yeah, correct. Any other changes? Well, you no, could... I think that, no, that word is offered. The required is after that one. That is offered is correct. Oh, uh, the... Because city offers it and then it is required. If you read further, oh, oh I see. Okay, the eight is offered. I remember right that. offered here. Yeah, yeah. because city offers this training. We're required. Yeah, it is here required. Yeah, yeah. It's a little wordy, but we'll yeah, it. but it is li like that. It is there offered by. They have the language offered. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Self assessment. All right, next item, self-assessment. I, I would make it stronger. I, I would say that the council or the board um, is, uh, it, it is highly recommended that the board conduct a regular self-assessment to determine whether it has achieved its goals. I would make it highly recommended. There's a... You Sorry. want to start the sentence, start that paragraph out. It is highly recommended that the council may conduct a regular self-assessment. Take out the word may, that the, the yeah, exactly. That the- uh, The board council, condu conduct. We just stick with board. We're using- Board, the board. board. How are we going to council now? Board. That the board conduct or, or hold an annual meeting to assess. Annual meeting, and you can take out of the board because we already put board in there. Yeah. Annual meeting to assess, take out of the board. Yeah, there you go. To assess, yeah, and you mean to assess the accomplishment, yes. To I highly recommend the board holds an annual meeting to assess the accomplishments of the previous year. Yeah, and you to might plan put for retreat. After annual meeting, put in quotes. Annual or... retreat, board retreat, yeah. And yeah, it's retreat. We refer to it as it's retreat. always held every year. Yeah, retreat. R E T. <laughs> yeah, that's what. Retreat. Yeah, and then there's no E. Last one, no E. Yeah. R E T R E A T. Yeah. Okay. You can check with the spelling check. That's good. Okay. And you can just, you can 
Do you, well, that's fine. Looks not, good. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Let's leave this thing. guy and leave that there. That's it. No, no there will be there's no, more. No one. Okay. There may be some more here. Yeah. At youth large. Uh, page 21, 22. Pa go to page 22 after this one. Yeah, here. And uh, go to the next pair of page also. Next page. Yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. There the are two lines, the first two lines. Yeah. Oh, well, we don't need that, do we? Because no, we have to make sure that we have added that one. This is the done language, and then we have to make sure that we added. We already did that, but we just want to make sure it goes with the done language. Oh, is it? The, these two, we are, uh, they are there in the before. But I didn't think that they voted on the UC. I thought the president appointed that person. No, no, that was for the age and other things. And like the certain condition they have to meet before coming to the board, uh, running for the youth seat. Wait, I'm like so confused, boss. Oh, okay, go to the page one twenty one, just a page before that. Here it is in the red one. Before, that? Okay. yeah, yeah, here, here, all the red you can see here. They are repeated on the second page. So this is what we're going by. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so they're appointed, but it, no, no, yeah, they are appointed. Yeah, yeah, correct. Oh, yeah. What you were saying? Oh no, no, no. We have to it read said that, that language. They were voted on. No, we have to see the language in the next pair. Page, I have added that done language. We have to make sure that language is there in the page 21. Okay, I, I, I understand that. But what I'm saying is if it's not voted on in the election, why do we have that on page 21? No, no, it is not there. Can we read that again? Can you go back? I can't back? see page 21. Okay, let's look at this real quick. Board position, okay. youth seat at large. Number of seats, there's one. It's elected or appointed, it's appointed. appointed. Yeah, correct. Eligibility to run for the seat, you have to be a stakeholder ages 14 to 17 years. Yeah. Just like uh, other information above. Right. And eligibility to vote for the seat per above and or go to school in the PRNC boundary. Yeah. I think and then this you can match with the next para and page, next page. Okay, I just have a question, I'm sorry, but if you go back up there, and it says stakeholders who are 14 to 17 years per above, but stakeholders 18 years or older who, it's totally different. Do you, right. see, do you see what I'm saying? It says stakeholders 18 years or It should or be older. a line. You need a line there to make it another. Um, because it's, it's, it contradicts are, itself. Why don't we be more specific then? Stakeholders who are 14 to 17 years of age, I take per above, get rid of that. Rid of my suggestion. Can agree. you go and read on the next page, uh, Gabriel? Yeah, one second. Let's add. Next page, to, uh, yellow language. Can we read that also? The yellow sentence? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this one. This is very clear. Yeah. Okay, now explain this. Must be at least 14 years of age on the day of the election or selection. So that should be added above that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Exact wording there. Yeah, exact wording, yeah. To where? Above. Oh, where we but, added that one. But hold on, we're not voting in the youth seat, it's appointed. It's so re regarding eligibility to vote for the youth board seat, we're not voting for the board what member. Says it there it says election it or selection. We what? are selecting, we are selecting them. Okay, but we're them. not electing them. No, no, not electing, selecting, selection. S, S for Sam, selection. I, I get it, but a selection is not a vote. No, election or, if it is election, no, if not, then selection. And we are going for the selection, appointment. I understand Becky's point. She's saying that it's not an election, okay. but this is done language already. Yeah, they're done language. So we can oh, leave that. Oh, it one. is? Yeah. Okay. okay. We can leave that, no problem. Well, yeah. I'm going to have a word with done because I don't understand <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 so you guys want me to add this just the last part of it yeah 14 years of age on the day of the election or selection yeah we, because, could, we could just put selection on ours yeah selection yeah you can do that oh, yeah. here yeah years on the date of selection on the date of selection uh, don't do it Un undo that yeah. undo that i hate, I hate it when it does that they, they, on the on the day 
they term term out on the date of their 17th on birthday. the day on the date of selection on Period. the day of selection yeah yeah day, day of selection yeah correct am and i correct you, in stating that they term out on on the date of their 17th birthday no yes. they they got till 18. they can serve they got they can serve a full um because this language was given by Gibson to us that uh, 14 no, to I 17. No, I know. It's just, I get, it's just a question. When do they term out? At, at, at the last day of their 17th year? Because I, I know that was the thing that didn't seem very fair that I thought we all thought it should be the, based on the fiscal year of their birthday. Correct. Yeah, but Gibson had corrected us to use the right. word on the day of selection. That is his language. That is a done language. This is a chart and it doesn't address that on this yeah. chart. Yeah. This is a done language, yeah. Can I say one thing? Yes, yes. Um, I think you need to draw a line between above at youth that large youth seat. There should be a line. Yeah. It's a new, a new category. Exactly. Agreed. And, <clears throat> and then also I think you put per above. I think we need to be precise. We should say per article. Correct. Correct. This. Yeah. Per where? Sorry. Here? But above. Yeah. Let me see. Hold on. We need to... it. Oh, yeah, that. So yeah. we should be specific. If you're, what article are you referring them to? We shouldn't just say per above. We should say per article, whatever it is. Or um, is there a specific oh, article? meaning up here. But the at youth seat is appointed, it's not voted on. It right. says right there appointed. See it on the and it says eligibility to vote for the seat, but we aren't voting for them. I think we should get rid of this per above and write exactly what we want to say and there. Put not applicable if it's not applicable. Uh, just take the whole thing out. I, I don't know. Eligibility to vote. Who can vote for the youth seat? The board members. But we aren't voting for the youth member. Board members are board, oh. the board is deciding on who's going to be the youth. So I should write board members. No, yeah, but the, in the context of this chart here, if you look at it, it's actually referring to an election. Right. Becky's right. Yeah, I think that we should put not applicable. Like that? Uh -huh. I think so, because we're selecting. We're not, it's not part of the election. And I think you're right, Jason. We need to put the line above. Yeah, that. we're going to put yeah, a line How do I even add a line above it now? Uh, I think you can go in. Well, you could you can do that later. But I think you could do insert line or you, what. Actually, what you could do is is copy one of the charts from the bottom and then paste it in there. Delete everything. You'll have to mess with it. I'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah. So I like this better. It looks right. And uh, you can delete the page next page. This and page can be deleted. This we can delete this page. We don't need that one. Right. Okay. And also, we have to change the date here also in the bottom, you see, 11, 11, 20. Right. We have to change it to today's date or whatever. Well, it's, not, date. it's not approved yet. No, no. But we can just say approved by law. It's not city approved yet. Okay, okay. Yeah, what I would say, let's go back to the NA. Why don't we put um, not applicable, let's write it out, and then let's put um, not applicable and then period and then put um, uh, uh, the youth seat is by appointment, right? By, or, you know, let's be, what do you want to put, Becky? Put something there where it says- Well, because they, they should have to, you know, that, qualify to be a stakeholder if they're gonna represent the students in our community, but- The point of this is to make it simple for stakeholders. So they can go to this chart you know what I'm saying? This is like just they put it in a, in a chart form so that people don't have to actually read the bylaws. They can just go and look at this. So we want to make it easy and clear to people that um, this is not applicable. The youth seat is by um, by, uh, by But don't you think they should, I don't mean to interrupt, but don't you think they should have to live within PRNC work, own property or go to school? I mean, we don't want to have somebody yeah, in charge we, of the youth. No, we just deleted that. That said PRNC bound school boundary or boundary school. 
it was there the line was there which we have just deleted so should we write here then that lives in the prnc boundaries yeah. that's why we have written uh, far above and how about work or attend school yeah th there was something prnc boundary school we deleted that one work did it done come up with that language already or no? No, no, it was we, it was already in the red. We had added that one, the boundary school, something like that. Oh, so we have to copy it from above. Yeah, because the schools, um, Let me see. our kids go there, but they're not within our boundaries, but we are bound to them. Right, yeah. like Granada Hills yeah. or Nobel or Chatsworth High School. Or Frost. Right, exactly. Lives so, within the PRNC boundaries. Uh, oh, excuse That's, me. The, the if you look at the draft atta PDF attachment, it was per above and or go to school in PRNC boundary. Yeah. Where is that paragraph, David? That's in the attachment B. Was deleted, but yeah. On the web, the PDF attached to the agenda. Yeah. Not that, the live that, document you're working with. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm looking I'm at this. attachment B. I'm yeah, looking yeah. at it, but I'm yeah. trying to find oh, where. It... Uh, at large, it's on page. Awesome. Three. Perfect. Perfect, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like no, copy that, right copy that, and put it in. Page twenty. Because right now I wrote it as lives or goes to school within the PRNC boundaries. Is that what we're trying to add? Uh huh. Yeah, because yeah. I mean they can go to Cal State Northridge and be, and no, they can't be a youth representative. Oh, yeah. Good. Lives or goes to school within the PRNC boundaries. Youth seat is appointed by the board. Cool. I like it. You guys like it? Yeah. Any other? I don't. I. Sure. You don't want to open it up to people who go to Granada Hills, a uh, high, or to Chatsworth High, or. Uh mm -hmm. If they live in Granada, if they live in uh, Porter Ranch, they're covered. Then they're covered. But what if, if they, they go don't to school, live in Porter Ranch? Then they have nothing to do with Porter Ranch. If they go to school in Granada Hills, they, 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 they live in Granada They live in Encino and go to school in Porter Ranch. That's or fine. they go to school in Encino and live in Porter Ranch. Either That's way. Right. Exactly. But they, they either live Granada here or go to school here. And go to Granada Hills. Well, For example, my son lives in Porter Ranch, but goes to Chatsworth High because that's the home school. So he'll be qualified. Correct. But if he lived uh -huh. in Chatsworth and goes to school in Granada Hills, he's not qualified because he doesn't live or go to school in Port Ranch at that point. Correct. We're on the same page. Well, I think we should make it more broad. It's going to be a challenge to get youth. Um, and I think that, but it's okay. I mean, we can try it like this. So should it be in the red language? Should it be in the red? lives or goes to school yeah it should be read all the yeah because like think about it if you well yeah oh like, no i mean that's fine yeah lives or go to school yeah yeah that's i think it's same youth would be interested in being yeah. in the neighbor council where they yeah. live or go to school yeah even if right. they go to Granada, but they live here it says lives or goes yeah all right jason Good. has his hand up I, I get, can I go uh, to, I got one question I don't think we can address, but if you yes, look sir. at section five under duties uh, and power, and I don't know how to address it or if it could be, but I, I have one concern and it's come up more than once. Where are you, section five? Yeah. Or article five. Article five. All right, let's go there real quick. Uh, where'd it go? Yeah, article five, section five, the duties and powers. One second. It's the original page six, so I don't know what it is now. Article yeah, five, I, section five. Okay. And I don't know how to address it if we want to, but I'm concerned that, you know, we've had this incidence where a person tried to run that their, their stakeholder status was totally bogus. And my analogy was Dunn was saying, well, they had a valid driver's license. Well, if I showed a valid driver's license, but the address was a vacant lot and I couldn't possibly have lived there, someone co with common sense should say, wait a second. Yeah, it was a valid ID. That's not a possible residence. There's no house there. The person, they pulled the wool over eyes. So that section talks about how it must provide proof of stakeholder status. And if their stakeholder status is validated, this will be held with up-to-date documentation. If the documentation is technically real, but it is totally nonsense, they, like they pulled a business registration 
for a, a, a location that they have absolutely no interest in and don't run a business out of, that should be challenged. I think it's maybe it's just a bigger question for Dunn to follow some kind of procedural rules and not change our bylaws, but that concerns me. Yeah, I don't think the neighborhood council could police it. We just have to follow by whatever the city says. The yeah, only thing the that city the city clerk's office yeah, because every year they problems. have to submit their status that they, they are living here or they have some connection with the port and boundaries. Right, but they, the person then specific uh, pulled, and we know who we're talking about, pulled a business registration for a house that you. Let's not get personal that, here. Yeah, that, that is. For I, the, I don't want to get into some legal. Please stuff. Don't interrupt me. The fact that well, it is a legal issue. Um, the fact is that. Um, there, the, you know, uh, the city clerk, the sleep of the wheel, they like, they don't have a process for it. They don't even know. I've talked to city clerk when someone shows them a bit ops of finance, even you sign a business registration under the penalty of perjury. And I'm like, well, how many times do you prosecute that? Oh, that's a good question. We don't know. They don't have a process. They're sleep of the wheel. They have, it, it doesn't come up. People don't worry about it. So the city of LA is so big. It's something they don't even have a process to think of, but I've brought it up. Gabriel, I hear your perspective. Let Don worry about it. Yeah, that don't worry about it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's neighborhood council should stay out of you know, or taking sides, yeah. right or wrong. You know, I, I think you know when I heard the conversation from Gibson, I think that his response was that the neighborhood council system is wants to promote inclusivity. And for example, you could be homeless residing on a corner, and that could make you a stakeholder too. That's correct. That per, I, and I'm sorry for not interrupting you. Because I accuse other people of accusing me. I'm sorry. I'm not like I'm not like trying to argue with you, but I'm just right. sharing with you what what he said. I you know I'm not trying to get in the middle of it, but I just think that you know they're trying to be more inclusive. And so, you know, I, there's yeah, I get that. But that's around legit. The homeless you person get around the system. I mean, people are people can get around the system. You know, it's just a reality and. Well, your example doesn't involve fraud. That's a homeless person saying, I live where I live. That isn't someone actually intentionally lying just to get on a, to go run, but that's fine. I think we have to defer to the city. You know, I don't okay. think we need to be getting in the middle of all this stuff. You know, I think let the city handle it and that's the way it is. And, you know, they're going to do what they're going to do. And that's just the- and Hopefully it won't, it won't occur again. That'd be the bigger picture. Are we done, Gabriel? Sounds good. Yes. Uh, so, so I move. I move the motion. I'll second it. One second. So Voss made the motion to approve the 2022 bylaw changes. Gabriel seconds it. Let me call a vote. David Lasher. Yes. Thank you, David Balin. He's eating a steak, I think. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Have a mistake. I heard something about a barbecue earlier. <laughs> All right, Hilda. Yes. Thank you, Jason. Uh, before I vote, I just want to say, you know, thank you. The bylaws is a very complicated issue, and I want to thank everybody who took the time to work on this. Uh, yes. Thank, thank you, Jason. Jason. It is. It is a complicated. It's a lot of verbiage and. We need, you know, the bylaws meets a couple of times and then it comes to the board and we go through this once a year. I'm happy that everybody was able to work together and uh, get to a conclusion without spending five, 10 hours on it. I like that. Thank you though. Lewis is absent. Bre Becky? Yes. Thank you. Brandy? Absent. Jennifer? Yes. Thank you. Voss? Yes. Thank you, Christine is absent. Gabriel, yes. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone, on that one. And then the next meeting. Next meeting is set for April 13th, but there might be a potential meeting on the 5th, as I mentioned uh, to a couple of people in the beginning of the, before the meeting, uh, trying to get consensus. Um, put it out there again. There's a potential special meeting coming up either on the 29th, 5th, 12th, or 14th. 29th, I was expressed a few people can't make it. The 5th sounds like a great date. Uh, I will send out an email to everyone tonight so you can respond. Let me know what day works for you. But this is regarding the Argos uh, fence line air monitoring in Port Ranch. David, you want to add anything to that? No, we'll let them uh, come up with their own uh, 
uh, lead on that and then we will uh, post it. But thank you, Gabriel. Perfect. Thank you. So it's most likely the fifth, but we'll get a consensus to see if we have quorum by email. Uh, you'll get an email tonight. And then um, without any objection, we can adjourn the meeting at 8.16 p.m. Can I ask a simple, dumb question, totally related? Yes, sir. Does anybody knit? Like, knit? There's a reason why I ask. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> oh. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your attention, John Thank Barton. You. Oh, you're welcome. It's good to see Thank you guys you. again. Take care. Thank, Thank you, John Barton. Bye-bye.